welcome back to school. This is going to be a very short introduction to my experiences of reading in uh, school, just in general, when I first started reading. Uh, to be honest, I really cannot remember much. Um... I do remember in second year, second grade, my uh, teacher, Mr. Fritz Hammer, gave me a book called The Little Red Hen. And the thing that I remember about it was that uh, the book had pictures in for many of the common words such as hen, pig, bread, wheat, um, you know, horse, things, just the various characters that were frequently used. Um, they had those pictures for them. So I wasn't really reading all the words. It was just, oh, just look at the picture. That's a hen. So it's not like you're learning to read the word hen. You're looking at a picture. Oh, that's hen. Um, and to be honest, I think now that I'm thinking back on this, I remember um, a little bit of um, what, what they would call phonics. I don't know what the book was, but I remember it was like, plaid uh plaid red i think there was like two at least two possibly three different colors like red uh green or or not orange but blue i think it was either red or i know one of them was red and the other one may have been blue um but i in in those books i remember there being pictures like apple for a and b banana things like that um there's a lot of pictures involved and i never really was good at um reading words because when i was learning i think i had memorized the shapes of the words, and I never really grasp the phonetic. <sighs> the cat just walked over me. <laughs> I never really grasp the um, the phonetic of reading the phonics of everything. So when I came across a new word, I had no clue how to sound it out. And if I did try to sound it out, it was nothing like what the original word said. Um, so, yeah, and, and some of the stuff I just memorized because I wasn't really, I, I, I don't know, like the PH, how it sometimes make the f sound. Um, I don't know why, it's just one of those things I had to memorize um when it comes to like words that have the same sound but different spelling like for example in the reading assignment if I have dead d-e-a-d -E and bead b-e-a-d I'm looking at those words and I'm thinking well they got the same middle letters they should say the same thing and why bed b-e-d is not spelt the same way as bead or whatever you know I, I i mean there's just or head or dead or i mean there's just really weird things that i just never understood um and I I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I never got 
spelling I never got reading um still my reading is it's horrible because I don't I don't comprehend what I read um oh gosh um if you go back and look under the please watch this um first playlist there is a little reading I guess you could say it's a reading assessment of McGuffey's reader. I think it, I think it was McGuffey. I, I, I don't know, but one of those readers and I literally like when I was actually reading, I had like, as far as comprehension, I had to go all the way back to like the first level. Like I started with, I think there was like a high school level or something talking about all these people that I've, I've never heard of great authors and things. I, I've never heard of them. Um, but yeah, I literally, I had to go all the way back to the first level before I actually could comprehend what I was reading. Um, that's just how poor things are. Now, the thing was when I was reading, when I was learning to read, I was learning to read with printed letters. I did not know of Braille until my sixth year. It's either my fourth or fifth or sixth uh, year in elementary before I went to uh, junior high school. And so I was not introduced until extremely late to Braille. And even then, um, my my vision teacher, she had said, oh, well, this is in case your vision gets worse, which now, you know, so many years later and seeing the repercussions of having residual sighted students use large print and coming to the fact, oh my gosh, these people, they can't read their I mean, they don't have jobs. A lot of them are just, you know, poor. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and it's true. Um, when, if you cannot read and write competently, you're not going to hold a job. I mean, of any, I'm not saying flipping burgers is bad, but pursuing something that you really want to do. Um, for me, I, I would love to do something in music, but if I want to do something in music, I have to be able to read music <laughs> on top of <laughs> text, <laughs> singing and things like that. But still, even then, um, all when, when I was in, uh, at a university, all the music professors said, told me you have to be able to read music but no one would teach me how to read music unless it was on the standard five line staff um so yeah I don't know it's not about reading music but um but going back to reading um I really don't remember much other than that book The Little Red Hen in my second year of school. Um, I do remember when I was at the elementary school, I would always check out a collection of books called the Bernstein Bears. And I always would read them and look at the pictures and, you know, try to learn the morals of them. I don't know. Um, but yeah, those are my, probably my favorite childhood books. Of course, now that I know that bears don't talk and they don't wear, uh, blue dresses with white polka dots and <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, um, I would, I would, um, going forward being this learning experience after we get through the 
rampage course of the Lincoln Braille. That's what we're calling it because it's got a picture of Lincoln on the cover. Um, we call it Lincoln. We call it Lincoln Braille. Um, but after we, do, after we get through this, um, there are two volumes in the book. I don't know if we're going to go through them both. I'm thinking we might. Um, because the second volume does has have significantly more uh, writing assignments and things like that. The first volume you could technically, you know, turn them into writing assignments, but it's more focused on the reading aspect. But um, the second one does in involve more uh, higher braille skills and things um but after that um i have a boatload of <laughs> of um uh early readers uh from the public domain that i would like to work through and read through and the main reason is that the books in the earlier from the early years, their stories are much more better. Uh, there's more uh, simplicity, not in simplicity in the words, but just simplicity as to the lessons being taught, the morality. Um, there's not a lot of fluff. I mean, there's some fun stuff. Like, I remember one time I was looking through, I think it was one of the McGuffey books. And it was a story. I was just, you know, casually reading through it. Um, it was a story about um, these, um, this this shepherd boy. And he's got these sheep and he's got the, the cows and, you know, um, a, a stream or something. And, I mean, y you're, you're reading this story, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so nice. And you get to the end, and you find out that it's only in, the, in his imagination. I mean, it's only in his imagination, but that's the thing that, you know, it's something that we don't utilize a lot nowadays, is, is the imagination, which is another reason that I want to read from the older books because there's not a lot of pictures and it 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 ha there there's more um capability of uh using mental imagination um to bring the story alive versus the stories nowadays they're just everything is illustrated for you so you don't really have to imagine anything you just look at the picture and oh well i know what that book is about <laughs> i mean you can just look at the pictures and know what's going on and not even have to read the words uh the earlier books they had, i mean they had a few pictures in the beginning um but even then those were primarily to teach about the story they weren't telling the story they were teaching about the story um but the student had to still read the story to understand everything that was going on in the picture um but yeah so um that's i don't know um trying to think of any other reading experiences um I do remember reading a book. I don't know. I think it was in my um, elementary school years. I'll be dipped if I remember which one it was. But it was called um, Island of the Blue Dolphins by, I think it's Scott Odell. Scott Odell? I forget. Um... But that was a really fascinating book. Uh, basically, it's about um, 
uh, Native Americans or some indigenous people, I'm not exactly sure, um, but they uh, went on a ship and a, 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 a daughter and the his her brother were left behind or something like that and it's basically talk it basically goes through and it talks about how they survived and you know the different trials that they had and perseverance and all that other you know good stuff that makes a good story um but yeah uh there's a, another story i remember reading um, I think I have it in my library. It's called Indian Captive. I've got no clue who wrote it, but I think it's based on a true story. I'm pretty sure. Uh, basically talks about um, how a uh, family, their children were taken um, by uh, Native Americans and they were taught the ways and you know it talks about her ups and downs of this little girl learning learning about you know all this strange cultural stuff um and then at the end it 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 uh confronts her with well does she want to go back to her people or does she want to stay and to be honest, I don't remember what she, I don't I don't remember what she chose. So I'll have to read that book again. Um and then there's some other books recent recently that I shouldn't say recently, but I have purchased that I would like to read. There's a book that I purchased from a bookstore. It's called um Flower of Baskets or a basket of flowers. <laughs> I don't know if you can have a a flower of baskets, <laughs> but a basket of flowers. Um, from what I remember reading about the synopsis, uh, from the inside of the book, it talks about how um, a father. I think it's his her father is accused of stealing something and it basically talks about the perseverance of the family going through um the trials of not having their father and all these stories are set back before the 1900s so there's a lot of close ties within the family that are definitely seen um that nowadays we just don't have um i'm trying to think of any other stories um i mean i was gonna say other than the holy scriptures um i i i'm trying to think even then i i really don't remember i think vaguely i remember um some scriptures as I was growing up, um, I remember when I was in fourth or fifth year, I went with a friend to her church and I think they had some scripture reading or something like that. Um, other than that, a lot of my reading of scriptures basically came through music I sang, which is really really fascinating um especially when i was um at the at the church where i was helping out in the music library and stuff um there a lot of my scripture memory comes from songs anthems and oratorials that literally just pulled scripture and set it to music um it was kind of interesting because sometimes i'll come across certain passages and instantly um music that that i've sang it to would just come flooding in my head and it's like i can't help but sing it <laughs> um 
But even then, uh, that's another, um, that is a huge, huge, um, ambitious goal is I would like to be able to fluently read through the scriptures. Um, and I mean, I, I've got a copy in, I mean, I've got several copies in print, but Braille, um, is basically where, where I'm looking at because reading in print is, it's not good. I mean, it's, it's just, it looks horrible. Um, I struggle because I can't see the words. I struggle because I can't read the words in the sense of a phonetic, phonetic pronunciation. I don't understand what I'm reading because I'm too busy figuring out what the words are. You know, and just all sorts of stuff. So, like everything else, I'm pretty much starting from square one because, <laughs> yeah, um, I basically got that diploma and there's really no education to back it up, which is not good because, yeah. <laughs> um, so that kind of concludes... I guess reading <laughs> not much there other than Little Red Hen Berenstain Bears um, Island of the Blue Dolphins and the Bible <laughs> those are pretty much it um, and maybe a couple chapter books here and there but nothing real extravagant um I, I hear of other, um, like, homeschool moms talking about these great authors and great books of literature. And it's like, I've never heard of those books. I've never heard of those authors. <laughs> um, oh, I think, oh, I think one time in, um, um, I think it was in, no, this was in junior high school. I think we read. Tom Sawyer, um, I think it's Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn, I, I don't know, um, and then in ninth year high school, I, we read through, oh gosh, what is it, um, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, I actually picked up a copy of that at a library book sale because I was like, I remember reading this. I have no clue what it was about, but yeah, so I picked it up again. Um, so yeah, uh, let me see what else. Somewhere in there we read, oh yeah, I remember, um, in some, I forget what the class was, but it was some literature class or something we read through. Basically, it was like a watered-down version of Romeo and Juliet of Shakespeare, which um, I do have a copy of that along with a handful of his other tragedies. Somebody gave me a collection of his tragedies. So I've got Hamlet, I don't know, some king, King Henry VIII or something like all these different tragedies that Shakespeare wrote that I honestly really never read. <laughs> um, yeah. And even that is really interesting because all of that is written in literally like play format. Like you're not reading a story. You're actually reading lines, spoken, memorized lines of a play. And you're looking at the different scenes and you're looking at the different you know, in walks in so-and-so and, you know, does a sword joust with so-and-so. <laughs> it's just kind of funny stuff. But yeah, um, I, I've i got some books that I, I, I would like to read to broaden my reading and just to, just to read. Um, I mean, reading is good. It's good exercise for the brain, just like arithmetic and Mathematics is good and music is good for the brain when all this stuff is basically 
really good stuff that I'm doing for the brain because watching YouTubes and things like that is not very good for the brain. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is going to be interesting to see what happens with reading. Um, we'll work our way through the, uh, through the Lincoln Braille or the Illinois Braille series. Um, and, uh, one of these days I, I will try to do like, um, at least for like the first volume, I'll do like a little teaching lesson on the Braille alphabet. I remember I did like a little mini crash course, but it didn't really explain much of anything <laughs> other than just a few little things. But, um, now that we're actually starting reading, um, I would like to try to explain that so that people can better understand what it is that I'm looking at and how the Braille system works and just to broaden the education of the sighted people as well. Okay, so if you want to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget, I don't know where my bell is, but don't forget to ring the notification bell for all notifications.